Hi, I'm King County Prosecuting Attorney Dan Satterberg. Welcome to another edition of the Prosecutor's Partners. This is a show where we introduce you to people in the community who are working to make King County safer, healthier, and happier. And today, we're at Todd Beamer High School in Federal Way. We're going to meet some people who have dedicated their careers to keeping kids in school. You know, there's a direct relationship between your success in school and involvement in the criminal justice system. In fact, we know that people who drop out of high school are five times more likely to go to prison than people who stay and get their degree. There's a lot of great things happening in here in Federal Way. Let's go inside and meet some of those people. High school really, I was around sophomore, junior years when, when I was really messing up, you know, doing hard drugs, selling hard drugs. Um, going to rehab, getting expelled, I had moving to Seattle and then going to alternative school, a whole bunch of stuff. I was kind of like the class clown. I wasn't motivated. I was pretty lazy. Liked my teachers, but... These kids come from all walks of life, but they do have one thing in common. They started skipping school and were heading for trouble. It's called truancy. Tell me what's been going on with you. I believe every child that I sit down with and put on contract has an opportunity for that happy ending. My grades are getting better. I have mostly B's and A's, which is different from when I usually got, which was like C's. Washington's truancy laws are defined in what has become known as the Becca Bill. It outlines a truancy policy that begins with a stern warning to students and their parents and can escalate to daily fines and even juvenile detention. Let's talk a little bit about why it's important to go to school in general. If you don't come to school on time, every day, all day, then chances are that To help students get back on track, the King County Prosecuting Attorney's Office started a new program for schools, school attendance workshops. How many classes you would need to make up in order to get back on track? Um, the workshops are the first step to making a plan to turn things around. Um, I made a note that she wants to be a nurse, because um, I think that's important to keep tabs on. School attendance workshops are bilingual. Every part of the formal presentation is done in English and Spanish, and the counseling sessions if needed. I really do feel that intervention at the school level makes a difference. And I realized that what was making a difference was getting to know the kids one-on-one -on -one and finding out what the real problem was. People would be concerned about their grades and literally I would think they were stupid because they were concerned about their grades and I would just be like, oh my God, I'm worry free. Like, I, I didn't care. James is a truancy workshop graduate. Now a senior at Todd Beamer High School in Federal Way, he has been accepted at five colleges. Now that's a life changing outcome. And then getting that letter and I'm just like, wow, I turned it around. Like I, I'm a lot different than I used to be. You know, it's tough. But I guarantee you that if you stay motivated and you stay proactive and you stay positive and you set goals for yourself that eventually you're going to reach a platform of success. While the goal of the program is to get kids back in school and on track to graduate, it also keeps youth out of the legal system, a path that can lead to more criminal justice encounters. That fact alone is what makes these truancy workshops so critical keep all your doors open. You have so many opportunities in front of you and you want to be able to access those later on in the future. We're joined now by Julie Mock, who is the attendance secretary here at Todd Beamer High School. Julie, thanks for being with us. Absolutely. Attendance secretary sounds like a pretty big job. You're counting the kids who show up, but you're also noticing the kids who haven't come to school. Right. As a Becca secretary, I follow attendance and kids that are not showing up, that are unexcused, I count however many, and when they get to a certain point, then I send a letter and I do a workshop with them. Again, I'm amazed at, at not only having to deal with the kids who do show up, but, but being worried about the kids who aren't here. How do you reach out and, and get them to want to come back to school after they've been missing for so long? In order to get a student sure. to come back to school, I have to get to know them so and know what's stopping them from coming to school. And that's really, for me, that is the ticket right there. If I can sit down with a student and I have like a contract that I put them on, an attendance contract, and going through that contract, we determine what is the real issue, why they're not coming to school. And then my job, I always make it clear to them that I'm not a disciplinarian. My job is to support them. I'm their go-to person. And once they sign the contract, and then parents as well, 
then I have the students check in. I believe it takes 21 days to make or break a bad habit. And so I make the kids come in and sign in for 21 school days. And they have to come see Julie when they come they to They have school. to see me every morning. They sign in and kind of gives me an opportunity to touch base with them and see how things are going. And, you know, and then I can look to and see who all's there. And if they're not on my list, then I start calling around. And for you, out. the secret is it's relational. You have to know these kids and they have to know that you care about them. You have to build a relationship with these students. You have to give them a reason to want to come to school. And I'm kind of like a, I guess, kind of a mom kind of person at school for these kids. Well, thank you very much, Julie Muck, for the work that you do here at Todd Beamer for helping kids get re-engaged and for reaching out for that personal touch. You're welcome. We're joined now by Jenny Tibbetts, who is the Becca representative for the Federal Way School District. Jenny, welcome. Thank you. First, you have to start by telling us, what does it mean to be a Becca representative? So, um, officially, I'm the liaison between the King County Prosecuting Attorney's Office, uh, the King County Juvenile Court, and then the Federal Way School District, and I oversee the school district's truancy intervention and prevention efforts. Okay, and Becca, you have to tell us a little bit about what, what that means. So um, Rebecca Hedman is um, the young girl that the law is named after um, and the um, story as I tell it at our school-based workshops is that um, Rebecca um, lived in a time where there weren't laws that said that schools had to notify parents if their kids weren't attending school um, or really take any action if students stopped attending school at all and so that's what had happened was Rebecca started skipping school um, and her parents had no idea because the school wasn't required to notify them um, or take any action and through skipping school she fell in with the wrong crowd and ended up in Spokane um, and was murdered at the age of 13 and that's when um, lawmakers um, came together and decided that um, schools needed to have a bigger part in keeping kids safe um, and schools required now to notify parents if their kids aren't attending school and then take action to try and keep them in school. A tragic story that has really reinforced how important the role of the school institution is in the safety of the community. A big part of your job is to make sure that kids who are falling away from school, who are becoming disengaged, get re-engaged. Mm -hmm. What are the reasons that kids might stop going to school? Oh, there are many reasons. Um, actually, the most common reason that I hear is trouble waking up in the morning. Um, and there are other reasons like um, feeling overwhelmed in class, not understand what's going on, um, falling behind and then not knowing how to catch up, um, not feeling connected at school. A lot of times we'll have um, students who are caught up in responsibilities at home, so um, older kids staying home to take care of younger siblings, um, or parents who have um, multiple kids at home and it's too much um, for them to get everybody up and ready and at school on time or at all in the mornings. So you're saying it can be everything from as, as simple as getting an alarm clock mm -hmm. to as complicated as I, my parents don't value education mm -hmm. and don't think I need to go. Exactly. How do you reach them then on an individual basis? Um, well, the first thing um, I guess we really stress in all of our interventions is relationships um, and communication. So first step is um, establish positive um, communication with the parents and the student. And then as far as engaging um, both students, especially the student, is to find whatever that spark is, what they're interested in or what they love to do. Um, if there's anything they really care about and find a way to tie those things in with school and help them to see how um, school or someone at school will help them to reach their goals um, and experience those things they're interested in. Now if you read the law in the state of Washington, the Becca law, it is very court focused. We file petitions in court and I think there's an, a vision that all these children are going to be marched in front of a judge, but, but we're trying not to do that. Right, and we um, have uh, a very strong partnership with your office. Um, and typically what happens um, for most, most of our truancy cases are um, high school age students. Um, but what happens is we file the petition with the court, but rather than going straight to court, um, the prosecuting attorney's office puts on um, attendance workshops and we meet with the students there. Um, we describe it kind of as a diversion opportunity. Um, and we meet with all the students and their families. Um, there's some information pre presented, um, but we talk about what are the barriers that are keeping you from getting to school. 
and then uh, address ways to address, uh, find ways to address those barriers and come up with a plan to get them back in school. And then also trying to establish more um, preventative efforts before it even gets to that point. Um, so school-based preventative workshops just to educate students on attendance requirements and expectations um, and to get, the, get them the tools that they need to get those habits of good attendance started early on. How soon should we be working with kids on those attendance habits? High school seems like it's maybe a little High bit late. High school, um, those habits are pretty well established. Um, ideally, it would be elementary school. Um, we know that even um, if absences are excused, so not just truant absences, but even excused absences, if they're t missing 10% or the more, 10% of the time or more, that students um, are impacted um, with their educational progress, so reading and math. Um, gets um, pretty severely impacted once they've missed 10% for any reason. So um, even if their parents are excusing, and then by the time they get to middle school, if they've had chronic absenteeism through elementary school, they don't have those habits of getting up on time every morning and showing up, and it's hard to tra retrain later on. Your education is like a train. If you're off the train, it's going to move forward without you. How do you help people get back and try to catch up with their peers? So there, are, we've developed a number of tools. Um, we try to um, start first with connecting kids, um, students with their teachers, um, and find out what they need to do um, so that they can work out plans for each of their classes. Say if they're a high school student, they've got multiple teachers. Help them to figure out a plan to pass each of their current classes. Um, our district also has multiple um, credit retrieval options, um, and most of our schools have after-school tutoring programs um, that are run by AmeriCorps volunteers, um, so we get students opportunities both during the school day and after, um, after school too to get caught up. Sounds like extraordinary efforts by your district to, to help kids who have, have kind of fallen off, help them come back before they're totally off the cliff. Definitely. Do you realize how important this work is? I believe it is very, very important. Have you heard the term, the, the school to prison pipeline um, before? I have. Um, and actually when we, um, a couple years ago when we first started um, kind of our, um, our re-engagement um, re efforts with the whole truancy system, we um, con contacted the Federal Police Department to get some um, just numbers on juvenile arrests during school hours, Monday through Friday, um, so that we could give schools kind of an idea of some of the uh, activities students are at risk of engaging in during the school day. Um, but that's one of the things we know that just if students aren't at school, they typically aren't at home because um, a lot of times their parents expect them to be at school. So they've got to be out of the house and there's, um, they're just at higher risk for all sorts of They're out in the trouble. neighborhood committing burglaries mm -hmm. or experimenting with drugs mm -hmm. or becoming vulnerable to the predators who are in the Exactly, community. yes. Well, Jenny, thank you very much for your work to keep kids engaged in school and for being one of the prosecutor's partners. My pleasure. Thank you. We're inside Todd Beamer High School here in Federal Way, and I'm joined by Deputy Superintendent Mark Davidson. Mark, thanks for joining us on the prosecutor's partners. Thanks very much, Dan. Welcome to Federal Way and Todd Beamer. It's a big job being responsible for the education of 22,000 students. How do you uh, approach the kids who are having trouble coming to school. You have your hands full with the kids who show up. Well, uh, it, we can't waste any kid. It's not okay. And, and the, that, not just because of the, the cost to society or the, the personal cost to any of us, but because it's, a, it's the positive end of it that we see that kids um, will contribute if you give them an opportunity to get to school and, and stay here. We have to work on attracting them to school, uh, making, it, uh, making it engaging for them, and, and helping them understand why they should be here. Is this a new mission for educators now to start to pay attention to the kids who, who are falling off the edge and are close to dropping out? Uh, we've been talking about it in the business, you know, even nationwide for a lot of years, but, but I think the last several years you see more attention being paid to it. Um, after some years of focusing exclusively on, on those academic things like math and reading and science, although they're important, I think we're starting to realize that we've got to involve kids in their education in many different ways. The, the term whole child is big now, and that's all about how do we help kids be successful, whatever they're doing, what kinds of things are they going to be good at? Is it going to be working on a lathe? Is it going to be uh, doing equations 
uh, in a lab at Boeing, it doesn't really matter. It's that they're doing something productive with their lives and contributing. So your challenge is to find that thing that's going to get that kid passionate and engaged yeah. in his or her educational track. As it works for all of us in our own, in our own work. Because kids, it, education is work for kids. That's what it, it should be. It should be fun, as our work is. But it has to be work and challenging and rewarding and all those things at the same time, just that we expect for ourselves. One of the, the frightening things that we're finding out is the direct correlation between success in school and likelihood of involvement in the criminal justice system. In fact, there's a name for it. They use the school to prison pipeline. What's your reaction to well, that? Well, they're, they're absolutely right on. The folks that have, have named that, used that name recently, it, it is accurate. Um, in fact, there are times, it, 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 as an educator, you almost get, are embarrassed sometimes by the disproportionate statistics that we see. You see a, a lot of, of kids of color who, particularly males of color, who are not successful, who are in trouble, who are experiencing school discipline, who are not coming to school, and, and it has uh, a, a terrible effect on their lives and everyone around them. And I think, I think we can break that pipeline up and, um, and keep kids in school and be successful. Um, I refuse to give up on that notion, as idealistic as it sounds, because I guess when we got into this business, that's what we were thinking 35 years ago. We could do this, and we got, you get sidetracked, and then you decide, no, we're not gonna be there. <laughs> it's time to change. Well, it's, and it's complicated, <laughs> and I never wanna make it any too simple, but, but there are kids who are here who wanna learn, yeah. And there's, there can be disruptive yeah. young right. people right. or people who are threatening others or bringing yeah. guns or drugs to school. And you have to re react, but you have to react in such a way as to give that disruptive youth, yeah. the defiant youth, a chance to come back and yeah. be a student. So how do you balance that? There have to be endless chances. They are kids, and I think sometimes people forget they're kids. You know, they're not, they're not little adults. They're not you know, little criminals. Even though they may engage in some criminal behavior occasionally, that does happen. A lot of the behavior that kids get in trouble for is not criminal. Defiance or, or disruptive behavior or attendance. That's not criminal behavior. And so we need to treat them like kids and give them chances. You help kids, that restorative justice concept that says, how do you change your life um, so, that you are a, so that you're an appropriate uh, member of society, your productive member of society, and that's about teaching kids things, a positive side of things. That and they may not have learned at home, that maybe someone didn't say these are the rules yeah. that, by which we behave. We have over a hundred languages in this district, wow. native languages, and so imagine not only has American culture changed, we're, we've all been part of that, right? I'm, I'm 60 years old, I've seen American culture change directly over, the, over my time here. Um, but it's also the fact that we bring people in from all over the world and come to this country who want to live here. They have a reason to be here, and that's to have a better life. And we owe them trying to figure out ways to help their kids get there. And they bring all kinds of languages and cultures and ways of behaving that we may have to work with and, and not sure how to react. And you're the adult in the room, so you have to figure we, that out. We are the adults. The kids aren't the adults. They, they need assistance, but the other thing you have to do is you have to involve kids in this stuff. And we have to involve community members and parents. Um, this is a societal-wide um, um, effort to make things different. It has to involve people. It can't be secretive. It can't be, um, it can't be arrogant. Um, it has to be something that people understand and it strikes a chord with them so that they join you. In the same mission, which is let's get these kids an yeah. education and a degree yeah. and give them the opportunities yeah. that are out there in the world. And there are, uh, there are opportunities. And, and that high school diploma is the first step to those opportunities. Mark Davidson, thank you very much for joining us on The Prosecutor Partner. I appreciate your commitment to making sure that every student can fulfill their potential. Thanks, Dan. We so appreciate that you've come to talk to us.